Okay, it's noon. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody. Many people will probably join us throughout the afternoon and tomorrow. Uh, we decided, based on some conversations, to continue to have our annual uh, symposium. This would be the third. Um, and as in the past, we've invited uh, external people to uh, participate because we are interested in sharing ideas, not just uh, isolating ourselves. The, um, the program is Enigma. It was originally uh, one of three of the last calls and teams for the NASA Astrobiology Institute. Um, so uh, this is a, a program um, which was funded for five years. And we have about 30 to 35 people uh, in the program from around the world, including from Italy, Israel, um, and so on. Um, can I have the next slide, please, B? The core question of uh, the program is how did proteins evolve to become uh, the predominant catalysts of life on Earth. Now, there are many reactions that can occur abiologically, uh, which lead to uh, chemical transformation. A uh, very simple example, which uh, many of you know, is that you can take photons and you can oxidize iron from iron two to iron three uh, at about 270 nanometers. These reactions, though, are sacrificial. They're not catalytic. So somewhere early on in Earth's metabolism uh, of life, um, proteins became uh, a very small proteins, probably very early, very simple proteins became catalysts. And uh, we don't really understand how that occurred. This is so far back in time that using the conventions of uh, phylogeny, it's very, very difficult to reconstruct from uh, sequence analysis, for example. One way we try to do it uh, with, uh, in, in, in the Enigma program is using uh, structural analysis of proteins and breaking this, these, these into what we call Legos, which Vic will explain and possibly Yana will explain as well. So we divided ourselves into three, uh, what would appear to be an oxymoron, focused but integrated research themes. And theme one is basically a structural biology, but not just looking at an analyses of structures, but actually synthetically uh, creating um, novel proteins. And uh, it's, the synthesis of nanomachines and the origin of life. It's led by Vic Nanda, who I'll introduce in a, in a few minutes. And I am part of that, that theme. Um, theme two is a bioinformational uh, theme. It's increasing complexity of nanomachines and microbial ancestors. How did we get emergent properties? Um, and it's a very, very difficult area of uh, computational biology. And three, theme three is the coevolution of the nanomachines in the geosphere. Now, why are we focusing on these three themes? Uh, you can have the next slide, please. The focus is on enzymes that move electrons with or without proteins, uh, protons. They're called the oxidoreductases. So the enzyme commission uh, has enzyme commission number one, two, three, four, five, six, and now seven. Enzyme commission one are the oxidoreductases. So for example, enzyme 1.1.1.1, there are four numbers associated with every enzyme, is alcohol dehydrogenase. Um, many of these proteins have been discovered by function. Later, they were purified. That's what biochemists did for many, many, many years. And in some cases, and many cases now, 
those proteins, uh, especially in human beings and uh, higher organisms, can be crystallized and analyzed and their the coordinates can be deposited in the protein data bank, which is housed in the chemistry department at Rutgers University. So that's one way of getting structure. Obviously, NMR is another way of getting structure. Um, but the uh, protein data bank has the largest repository of biological chemical information in the world. And we take great advantage of that to try to understand um, the evolutionary history of the oxidoreductases. Now, there are two major branches of oxidoreductases. I'm not going to go into them in, in great detail, but the ones that move electrons invariably uh, will have a metal, a transition metal associated with it. The number one transition metal for the oxidoreductases is iron, and number two is copper, and then manganese, and so on. Um, the ones that contain iron are uh, very, very old. Iron was a very highly available metal prior to the oxidation of the planet at about 2.33 billion years ago. And so it was incorporated into proteins uh, in various flavors. And uh, the evolution of metabolism is obviously key to understanding the origins of life. So we're trying to look at the enzymes that were at the core of the earliest metabolism. Now, some of these are um, highly conserved in extant microbes and microbial bodies. And uh, obviously, one of the microbial bodies that is uh, in all of us today is our powerhouse is the mitochondria. Uh, we are trying to further reverse engineer their evolution into uh, giving us an idea from very, very, very simple molecules, uh, for example, containing uh, 15 or 16 amino acids that can move electrons. How did these uh, early, potentially early proteins evolve into the more complex uh, Rube Goldberg apparatus that we see around us today, such as nitrate reductive, I mean, uh, nitrogenase or photosystem two or any of the enzymes that are really, really important in life today, but are incredibly complicated multimeric machines. Can I have the next slide, please? So this is a, a little drawing that Vic did for our annual report. Uh, and it sort of shows uh, schematically how the three themes uh, are related to each other. There's prebiotic to biotic catalysis. Um, the evolution of the nanomachines and their complexity is theme two. And theme three is how did the metal availability change over time? How did minerals change over time? And there's a feedback between how minerals and, and metal availability changed over time with the evolution of biology. And that theme is, is a really important one because these nanomachines are virtually non-evolving. They're very much stuck in time. Um, can I have the next slide, please? So the symposium uh, will be in two days, uh, over two days, and it's gonna be four hours each day. Uh, the way that we'd like to conduct the symposium is that we've broken it out into themes. Um, and if you have a question, which is, I hope, going to be the case, we'd like you to um, use the chat box to pose the question to the, the audience so that uh, the speaker can see the question and the, uh, the other participants can see the question. If you have an urgent question, you don't understand something in the middle of a talk that is essential for example, to understanding the talk. So many of you are not biochemists, structural biologists. You may not understand exactly what we mean by a protein fold. You may not understand what is a mineral. If you have that kind of question, I'm sure other people have those kinds of questions. Um, so you can pose that question and ask the uh, speaker to spend 30 seconds or whatever um, uh, 
explaining so that the rest of the audience can understand. Otherwise, uh, we will have ample discussion at the end of the day uh, and uh, the end of tomorrow. And the discussion shouldn't just focus on the talks. It should be focusing on what we can do better, what we haven't done, what are we missing, uh, or what are we focusing on too much. So having said all that, um, I'm going to jump a little bit ahead of time because I think we're going to be using up a lot of time. And I'm going to introduce uh, the, uh, the first speaker uh, in uh, the technical sense today. And that's obviously going to be um, um, Vic Nanda. Uh, just a little background about Vic. Um, Vic did his undergraduate degree at Caltech, and then he did his PhD at Johns Hopkins University. Um, he then did a postdoc at uh, Penn University of Pennsylvania and came to Rutgers uh, shortly thereafter. He is now a full professor in the Department of Biochemistry and Medical School and uh, also in the Center for Advanced Biotechnology and Medicine, which is a special center which um, reaches between the medical school and the uh, rest of the university. Um, Vic is a uh, structural biologist and computational structural biologist. Um, and he is going to give the first talk which is called uh, The Synthesis and Function of Nanomachines in the Origin of Life. Take it away, Vic.